New chances for development in the Atlantic over the next 10 days, one in the Gulf, another in the main development region, the latest in today's video. Welcome in folks, great to see you on this, uh, I believe it is Tuesday, if my math serves me correctly, uh, July 22nd, and a couple areas that we're watching out there for potential development, nothing screaming home run right now, nothing to panic about, nothing even really to be concerned about, uh, but definitely some things that we're going to watch nonetheless, because it is July going into August, and we know the hurricane season starts to act up around this time of the year, so I'm going to give you the latest on a couple areas that we should at least keep our eye on in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte, and if you haven't already, go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications so you're up to date uh, with the ever latest and changing model data and my analysis of that data. All right, let's dive on into things, starting with our satellite imagery today using our water vapor loop uh, in the upper levels, and immediately, I think one area you're going to jump out at you. We do have this region of uh, thunderstorm activity over the southeast right now. This is another stalled out frontal boundary. Uh, this is how we got Chantal to form not long ago and how we got Invest 93L, which uh, likely would have formed if it would have stayed a little bit further south. And this is really the exact same process all over again. And with that said, I do think we're going to run at least a chance of this trying to develop as it slowly works off towards the west here over portions of the Gulf and kind of riding the Gulf coastline over the next couple of days. Now, if that doesn't form, I think either way, this pattern stays consistent with these kind of stalled out fronts off uh, the southeast coastline that could try to spin up into something. So either way, going to be watching that region of the country, but also... Uh, the main development region. Uh, we do have uh, some increasing moisture content out here. Uh, I told you that these uh, first couple of waves would kind of set the stage a little bit. I think that's exactly what they're doing, helping them to kind of moisten up this uh, channel of the Atlantic and get it kind of ready for uh, a more active time frame of Atlantic hurricane season coming up towards August. And uh, that's definitely going to be something that we need to watch as depicted by our water vapor loop. But either way, you can see this big uh, upper level low pressure system just continuing to swirl away out here with a lot of dry air around it. So things remain relatively unfavorable right now for development out in that part of the Atlantic. Like I said, though, that likely to change. I just want to show you the um, infrared loop as well today. So we've got the water vapor and then the infrared. This shows more of where we have the strongest thunderstorms currently. And yeah, definitely some strong thunderstorms here uh, over portions of the southeast from South Carolina down to Georgia and Florida and then off the coasts of those states as well. So definitely going to watch that. But other than that, folks, we've got one little wave here moving towards the islands. We've been talking about that one. Chances for development now basically gone with that one. And we had mentioned that, that uh, even if it did develop, it was going to get ripped apart pretty quick. But uh, notice off screen here, a new wave coming off of Africa. We'll watch that one as well. But I think really it's the waves to come that are going to be uh, the more intriguing things uh, that we're going to be taking a look at in today's video. All right, let's go ahead and keep on talking about the tropics, starting with the Gulf. And then we'll take a look at that main development region and when that could uh, kind of heat up a little bit here towards the start of August. Starting with the Gulf, and I guess I should also mention this at the beginning, right now the National Hurricane Center not uh, having anywhere circled for the next seven days, although that doesn't mean that we couldn't see development. And uh, we're going to start with uh, kind of my analysis on where I think the chances are going to be the highest with the Gulf here, at least in the near term. This is where we have the highest chance of development. Uh, and I say highest, that does not mean that it is high, but just uh, relatively speaking to everywhere else, this is where we'll need to watch for that potential of some tropical activity. You can already see moisture increasing here off the southeast coastline. This was this morning. Uh, as we continue things ahead into this afternoon and through the next couple of days, this pocket of moisture over Georgia, Florida, uh, that dry air though coming in behind it from the northeast, which has actually led to a nice day here for a lot of us. And if you're not seeing it today, tomorrow will be a nice day for a good portion of the mid-Atlantic thanks to that dry air. And that'll definitely be a limiting factor. Now, no matter what, if you're under these greenish colors, expect higher end rainfall chances. Over the next couple of days, this is all the way out to Thursday morning, you could definitely see that pocket of increased moisture and increased tropical downpour risk, we'll say, before eventually moving towards Texas and things remain uh, pretty moist from the Florida Panhandle all the way into Texas by the time we get on into Friday afternoon. Noticing on the model, though, yeah, not really any real development happening here. One reason for that is the upper level winds. We've got some wind shear over this section of uh, the Gulf, very similar to 93L and what it ran into. We've got this upper level 
a uh, high pressure system and that is definitely leading to a strong belt of winds uh, from the east to the west. So we've got some easterly winds here over the Gulf and that's going to help to kind of rip this apart a little bit. That combined with dry air in the vicinity going to prevent anything major for, for, uh, from forming. However, you never say never and you know should it kind of line up well, maybe some little piece of that uh, moisture can get trapped under an area here where the winds aren't quite as strong in the upper levels. It'll have the chance to at least become something like I said, though, I'm not overly worried about any uh, really significant development, but could we get a quick name out of this sort of pattern? Absolutely. And you can see that on the GFS ensembles as well. All these red dots you see, these are where the GFS is predict, uh, predicting or its ensembles are predicting uh, an area of low pressure. And that would mean a tropical system this time of year, if it were over the Gulf, very likely. Uh, so watch this little area we have circled here over the Florida Panhandle. That's for this evening. Let's time it out for you. Uh, and you'll notice the ensemble members definitely upticking uh, the possibility that that could try to become something and uh, you definitely see a little uptick here by the time we get on into your Friday morning just off the coastline of Louisiana uh, like I said maybe a quick time frame there for uh, 12 24 hours that the atmosphere may become a little bit more favorable for development either way though does not look overly concerning uh, but with we definitely will see that um, precipitation and moisture field move into Texas which could increase rainfall chances, but uh, we'll definitely see that later on in today's video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at the main development region and when that could heat up as we start taking a look towards the month of August. The sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic are plenty warm enough just about everywhere for tropical development, although some areas definitely more uh, have that potential for more explosive development, we'll say like the Gulf where we have uh, even warmer ocean temperatures and other sections of the Atlantic. But either way, I don't think that'll be a limiting factor. The real limiting factors out here right now are dry air and wind shear, which brings the question, when will we see more moist air and less wind shear? Well, here we go. This is the European ensembles, uh, which are one of the more reliable tools to use when forecasting in the medium to long range and here we go by about a week from now this is this coming monday so starting to round out July here and starting to think about the start of August, uh, notice we get a push of moisture out here from Africa that kind of uh, starts to eat away at some of that dry air. And you can see the main development region becomes, uh, you know, at least more moist, definitely a pocket of moisture out here with higher P-watt values or precipitable water, uh, just meaning we've got, uh, again, higher moisture content. And definitely you're seeing a pocket here. It looks like a wave that has come off of Africa that is getting into that main development region right around 10 or so days from now. So uh, again, this would be right around the 1st of August is whenever this potential would uh, be rising out here in this portion of the Atlantic and definitely seeing higher moisture contents. Uh, and I'll just keep the area circled right around 10 days from now. Now, what about wind shear? Are we still gonna see high wind shear values? Well, uh, let's uh, take a look at it if I get the map on the right screen here. Uh, and uh, again, it's that section of the Atlantic. This is the exact same time frame. So whenever we're seeing that higher moisture content, wind shear starting to uh, calm down a little bit. It's about average to maybe uh, slightly below average in some areas. Um, so we'll see if that wave has a chance. Either way, though, if you go even further out, you go more to 15 days from now into the first week of August, uh, higher in chances of below average wind shear out here in that main development region. So you've got that 15 days from now, uh, about 10 days from now, you've got a wave that looks like it has higher moisture content. Here's that one again uh, that uh, is going to continue to pave the way and hopefully, um, or I shouldn't say hopefully, but uh, hopefully if you know a hurricane were to form and you're a hurricane, you would want to... Um, a more moist atmosphere. So we'll see what that does. Like I said, these waves generally pave the way for what's behind them a little bit. And could that lead to a pattern where uh, here we go 15 days from now in the European that we've got more average to slightly above average P watt values combined with that lower wind shear potential uh, definitely could get something going. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. Definitely uh, not anything I'm overly worried about right now. I will mention though, if we take a look at the ensemble members, uh, there is definitely the uh, potential here on here that some of these could try to get going. So here's the GFS through the next 10 days. GFS Ensemble's not overly excited about anything. Couple members try to get something going in the Gulf, whether that be the current system or maybe something a little bit later on out in time. Not super excited about that main development region though on the GFS Ensembles. The European Ensembles, a little different. Yeah, they're they're kind of honing in on this area about 10 days from now. That wave I showed you of increasing P-Watt. Uh, yeah, definitely having some members in there, getting that going, even a couple that show a hurricane. So definitely going to keep an eye on that. Like I said at the beginning, though, not overly concerned about any of these, but definitely a new signal growing for a potential tropical development.
Relief for some of us, scorching summer heat for others, and that scorching summer heat locked into these orange and uh, more burgundy boxes you're seeing. Heat advisories in the orange, excessive heat warnings there towards uh, Memphis, Jonesboro, Pine Bluff, and all the way down uh, the Mississippi Delta region where uh, it's a real scorcher. Now, out east, you notice we're starting to lose some of those heat advisories, a couple up here in the northeast, but... Generally speaking, you can see that pattern where drier air has uh, filtered down into the mid-Atlantic behind the Appalachian chain. That's leading to a much nicer day tomorrow. Even today, not nearly as hot thanks to some rain, showers, and storms uh, over portions of the Carolinas, Georgia, and even into Florida. Uh, you can definitely see that ongoing for many of us. And speaking of that dry air, yeah, here it is. You can see it uh, you know, on the way, those... Um, more uh, greenish to even uh, deserty colors here working into the northeast. It was a beautiful day in the northeast today. Some of that dry air now filtering down the backside of the Appalachian chain. And I think by tomorrow, even as far south as Charlotte and portions of South Carolina, going to get dew points down into the 60s, which uh, if this were February, that would feel muggy, but considering how muggy it has been, that's probably going to feel pretty good. Looking at a good 10 to maybe even 15 degree drop in a lot of these dew point values. So that's good news. We'll take it. Uh, any relief is good relief this time of year. Now, what's to come uh, and how long is this relief going to last? Well, spoiler alert, not very long at all, but I do think we'll get more shots of it down the road. Uh, so here we go. We've got this big upper level ridge, this big, you know, heat and high pressure and just a whole lot of not fun on going for many of us. That has continued the ring of fire pattern with severe weather up into the northern plains. It's continued that excessive heat into the Mississippi Valley I just showed you and then has luckily brought some nicer air on the northern edge of that into the northeast that has even filtered on down, uh, like I mentioned, into portions of the mid-Atlantic. As we go ahead in the time, though, it's going to work back east a little bit. And it's going to build in, and that new ridge of high pressure, by the time we get towards this weekend, unfortunately, is going to be parked right over the heart of the eastern United States. Everyone here is going to start getting in uh, on excessive heat once more, and uh, it's just a, it's a never-ending summer pattern. Uh, I say never-ending. Obviously, we're getting a little bit of relief today, but we have not had long-term relief. Now, could we get long-term relief? Well, I do think it's possible. You can even see down here towards Texas. Um, yeah, there's a little piece of energy trying to get going in the Gulf in that time frame we talked about towards the start of this weekend. Um, but as we continue ahead, there are signs that maybe about 10 days from now, notice a lot of energy up here into Canada screeching down. I think once again, the Northeast could get another shot of relief. Some models, including the European, uh, show bigger relief for a bigger swath of the eastern United States, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely see where that heads. Let's switch on over now, though, and take a look at where the severe weather is going to happen, where we're going to see rain, and that muggy meter, and exactly how much rain is going to fall over the next seven days. The supercell composite showing uh, definitely where severe weather is going to continue, and it's the exact same places. I'll tell you, if you live up in the Northern Plains since the start of June, it has been nonstop severe weather season. And again, I'm not going to stop this day by day, but you get the idea here. It continues to swell up into the afternoon and evening hours up into the northern section of the country. Here we go by Saturday of this weekend. Higher end supercell chances once more continuing up into that part of the country. And at times, you know, those pieces of energy even getting into the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. But uh, it's really the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska that is continuing to deal with this severe weather pattern that just never seems to end. Now, where else are we going to get rain over the next um, you know week or so? Well, obviously up there where we're seeing severe weather, rounds of storms, round of low, rounds of low pressure, and then also along the Gulf, like we mentioned, you can see those increasing rain chances along the I-10 corridor by Thursday afternoon here, uh, and we'll keep it going here even into the start of the weekend. And more of the same, rain on the northern side of this high pressure. At times, the northeast is going to get rounds of rain. Uh, after this uh, drier stretch we're in right now, down south towards the Gulf region is going to get higher in rain chances. And that's really the continuing story. It's this northern belt on the northern side of this ring of fire that's going to have rounds of showers and storms. And then uh, into the Gulf, at times, going to have rainier periods as well that kind of come and go. And that's, that's really just the theme that we're seeing here. Now, the muggy meter, yeah, it's going to be muggy with this as well. Some of you have got uh, flow out of the south and corn sweat going on up here in the Midwest. Uh, yeah, that's double trouble this time of year. But you can see uh, those higher in dew point values or that muggy air that you can wear uh, continuing to surge up after this quick uh, cool down that we're seeing right now. Uh, but notice, by the time we get to this weekend, still pockets of drier air uh, filtering into the northeast. Maine, uh, boy, oh boy, do I wish I lived in Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont right now. If anyone lives up there and uh, you want to fly me up, to definitely let me know because this is nice. I mean, sure, you have muggier days, but it really, it's been a relatively okay 
feeling pattern over the past couple of days and will continue to be so. And then the European model continuing to throw this idea out that maybe around 10 days from now we get our first wide sweeping cool front or uh, dry front, if you want to call it that. It's not quite a dry line or I mean, technically it's a cold front, but it really all we would do is uh, make things feel nicer outside, much like what we're seeing right now for portions of us. European again showing this in that 10-ish day time frame, sweeping through for a lot of folks. Uh, is this a fantasy land run? Probably, but I do think the pattern in the long range does support more shots of cool air, especially in the Northeast. Maybe we get something more widespread like this as well uh, once we start looking towards August. Final thing, I'll show you rainfall totals over the next seven days, according to the Weather Prediction Center. Uh, highest total is going to be up into the Northern Plains, into the Dakotas, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, UP of Michigan, that same area I mentioned, and then down into the Gulf states as well, with also plentiful rain, hopefully not too much, but enough here over the Ohio Valley, definitely seeing some showers and storms at times as well. But highest in rainfall amounts are the Northern Plains and the Gulf states. Uh, noticing though, Texas still remaining pretty dry. They're uh, betting that a lot of that energy is going to not quite produce a lot of rain into Texas. We'll see. Uh, but um, I definitely think at least the Gulf Coast of Texas is going to see some rain. The Houston area all the way back into Louisiana looks to see rounds of rain throughout this week, especially the later half of this week. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And uh, with that said, I'll see you all tomorrow.